Today our project is making an Adirondack chair and we're actually getting the plans right out of the fine woodworking. This is their outdoor projects 2013 version and if you've got this magazine or you go to your newsstand you'll be able to buy it for the uh, the summer months it's usually available for three or four months and it, it's got great color pictures in there um, shows all of the dimensions everything you need uh, on putting well there's another uh, a different kind of chair but all of the detail on how to put this chair together and we're going to do a video on this so you can see all of the multiple steps in building your own Adirondack chair. Now the wood that we're using for this project is called red cedar and we actually went to a local mill and got ours uh, and it's what they call four quarter or one inch thick so I'm going to have to plane this down because the plans call for three quarter inch but for you you can go to your local lumber store and buy three quarter inch already plain material and that's the quickest and easiest way to get the material for this project. So after arranging all of the boards the next thing I need to do is to joint them so that they can be cut to length and to width. The next thing I'm going to do is cut the arms to length and because I've already got a good jointed edge on both of them I can actually put them both together and do what we call a gang cut uh, and so I've already lined up the, the blade, well relined up the blade now uh, and I'm ready to make that cut. After you've trimmed all of your boards to length, the next thing you're going to need to do is trim them to width, and we do that on the table saw. Uh, but before we get started, it's important to remember that the saw blade wants to be a quarter to a half tooth above the material, and we do that both for a better cut and for safety reasons. making some progress here. These are all of the seat slats so they'll be under this part here and these are all of the back so they'll be going up the back of the chair and they'll be uh, aligned like this. Now what I want to do with all of these is I want to ease the, this very sharp edge on here but I only need to do it on the top side and I'm going to do it on the backs and on the seat and I have the router set up here with a, a 3 8 quarter round in it and I've set up all of the dust control and everything and I'm just going to run through all of these and just put a little quarter round and we'll show you a close up of that now like all things with the router if you're ever dealing with cross grain and of course we're dealing with cross grain here we always do the cross grain first so what I'm going to be doing is the cross grain and then this then the cross grain and then finishing with the long grain and when you do that you eliminate any chances of tear out. The backs of the chairs call for the, the slats to be uh, have a little bit of a taper to them and I cut them off camera uh, but I wanted to show you what I did and how I did that. When I'm cutting cedar I really want to have this guard on because it helps circulate the chips down into the machine and off into the dust collector. I really hate having cedar um, coming at me and this 
uh, on this saw, this uh, guard comes off really easy. Now, it actually tightens up underneath with a bolt, but I want to take it off so that you can actually see, and I'm not going to cut any wood, but I want you to see what happened. And for this, I made a simple, a very simple tapering jig. And a tapering jig always has a little kind of a notch thing at the bottom because you want to hold the wood from whipping back. And basically what I did was set it up in such a way, and it, it just, it only took a couple minutes to do, because at the top of these, of these chair backs, they want to be two inches, and and tapered down to one and three quarters. There's not much of a taper on them. So what I did was I just set this up manually on the saw and all it is is a piece of scrap quarter inch plywood, uh, an old chunk of, uh, another chunk of plywood with a little um, notch thing at the bottom and basically you just set it up and again the blade height is important because you never want the blade any higher than the material so I would have set the blade right about there and basically you start it here and just push it through the saw and because this is at a little bit of an offset it gives you, and I know it's a little bit hard to see, but there is a little bit, this is three quarters of an inch down here to two inches up here and that's what this tapering jig does. Pretty simple to make and uh, maybe in a future video we'll actually make an adjustable one of these. Now the instructions say at the bottom to put some little quarter inch tabs and that's what I've put down here and you can see they're just loose in there all the way along the bottom and to put some 3 8 little pieces in here and you can see I've done that all the way along here and this is at the 18 and a half inch mark so that gives this sort of a fanning uh, effect to this back now the next thing to do and I've actually got this secured I just put a couple little finishing nails in the top and the bottom so this doesn't move around on me the next thing it says you have to make a simple compass and that's that's all this is and basically what we're going to do I'm, I've got a little nail in there and I'm just going to drive that nail through a little bit and I've already marked down 10 inches from the top here and this is just a little under 10 inches so we're going to put the screw in there and we'll just tack that very lightly and then we'll put the pencil and again we're using I'm using the white pencil so I can see it better and we're just going to mark each one of these boards then we'll basically just go to the bandsaw and we'll cut these off and that will be the top of the chair This is all of the pieces to the chair and you can see there's a lot of different pieces and sometimes there's different shapes and sizes to them. I actually label them, especially ones that I'm not quite sure of, like the uh, front verticals and the, the, the back uh, supports, um, the arms and the, um, the bottom support. The seat and the back, you don't really need to label those because they're pretty obvious, but the other ones, I find it a lot easier to label them because I don't want to start cutting something wrong when I already have the rough shape there. So it might be something you want to think about when you've got multiple pieces like this. Now here's a side view of a rough drawing of this Adirondack chair. And the next part that we want to make is this part here. And the, Now they actually give you, in the magazine or if you're working off the website, they actually give you um, sort of a, a rough drawing of it here, but they don't really go into detail of it. And that's what we're going to do here, is we're going to show you. It says, uh, reproduce at 400%. The quickest and easiest thing to do is to get yourself some dividers like this. And you can get, you use the divider and on, on the plans you take a known area and they do give you some dimensions so you can take some of those or you can just simply put the dividers on an area and I'll do it on here. For example, you put the dividers on here 
and we know that we need to expand this 400%. So basically, this is one. We just need to do that four more times. So when we get the board laid out, all we have to do is go one, two, three, four, and that would be the marking. From your viewing perspective, here's where the back is going to come up, and this is the seat area in here. This is and another one here. And you can see, just by moving at that point, I actually have this wood now making this graceful this graceful curve. So all I need to do now is to follow this with my pencil line. This is the top view of what the arms look like. So I'm just going to use the same techniques using the dividers because they give you enough dimensions on here that you can use the dividers and use the four times click, 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 click. One of the things they call for in the plans is to have a board that would have to be 8 inches wide. And I knew that I was going to have lots of leftover material, so rather than buy big boards and actually have to cut away so much waste, what I did, because I knew I would have extra pieces left over, and I did, I actually just glued on a little bit of wood for this area right in here. Well, that uh, glorious day of assembly has finally arrived and I've done a few things off camera to help speed things up. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the hardware, but what we're going to do first of all is we're going to be putting this, and I've actually got this on the workbench now, we're going to be putting this and a couple of bolts in here and a couple in here and we're going to assemble all of this stuff, this bottom stuff. Here's our chair laid out. So here's the bottom, the bottom rail, and this is where the ground would be sitting on, right here and right here. And from your angle where you're looking at, I have these aligned with the very front of my workbench, so that this is sort of the ground level down here, and this uh, square is I'm using it to align this because I need to put a bolt a couple of bolts in here and I need to put a couple of bolts in here because this is the upright here and this is where the back is going to come up from this area here and here's the arm and of course none of this is uh, is fastened down yet I'm just sort of laying this out so you see what this looks like now that we've got the, the bottom part and the front legs on, we can actually lift the chair up and it actually starts to, to resemble what we set out to make. Actually the back has to go on first. So what I did was make a center line on both the top and the bottom. And remember we marked all of these back uh, supports so we know which one goes there and that's the center one and that will go there and we'll put that on and then we'll use the spacers that we used when we did the original arching on the top and we we'll use that spacing and I'll go ahead and start putting those on. Now that gives you an idea what the chair is starting to look like now actually starting to look like a chair so now I'm going to go ahead and put screws in all of the bottom and drill the upper support and put all of these parts together now. Now that the back's on, we can start putting on the seat and I'm going to take a minute to position these off camera uh, just to make sure that there's a, a, a little bit of space between them. I might need to use some spacers. So I'm going to do that off camera. They're all pre-drilled and then the last thing we need to do is to drill these seat covers or drill these seat uh, bottoms and put them on.
The best way to do this is to just use little spacers, and I use the same spacers that I used on the top of the uh, the, the top slats. So I'm just going to go ahead now. These are all pre-drilled, and I'm just going to go ahead and start putting all of the seats together. I've put this level on here. This is just sitting free now, and I put the little wedge at the back there. And all I need to do now is put some screw holes through here and screw this on, position this and screw the, this arm on and do the same thing from the back. I'll screw, put a couple of screws on in the back of that one and then I'll be able to drill right down into that and that will fasten that arm. And then off camera I'm just going to do the same on the other arm but you don't need to see that now that you understand how that's done. And that will have the arms on. Well, I've got the arms on now and that concludes the making of the chair. The next thing I'm going to do now is move the bench out of the way here and we're going to put this right down on the floor where it's best viewed. Any furniture that you make is best viewed when it's actually in the position that it's going to be used in. So we're going to put that down. We're going to sit in and see how comfortable this chair is. And here's our finished chair, and it's in the position that it will be when it's on the deck or on the lawn. And it's actually very comfortable to sit in. The scooped back, the scoop back and the and the dip in the in the seat makes it a, a comfortable chair to sit in, especially if you're going to be sitting in it for long periods of time. It's a very comfortable chair to sit in. So if you're interested in making this chair, you can go right to this uh, Outdoor Projects, and this is a fine woodworking magazine. I just picked up on the, at the magazine stand, uh, and it's 2013, and it should be available for several months on the newsstands. If not, you can get the plans online from the fine woodworking site, uh, and this is a, a Taunton Press. A very good magazine, uh, excellent books, excellent uh, publications that they make, and we'll provide you with links to that. So, if you're new to us, we ask you, of course, to subscribe to this channel, and we also ask you to subscribe to Woodwork Web, and we'll have an associated article on uh, assembling this chair and building this chair, and of course the links uh, that you can get uh, this uh, these plans from uh, from Fine Woodworking. You can actually even buy the plans, the direct plans from Fine Woodworking if you want to do that, or you can get the information off their website. So, once again, I'm Colin Canat. Thanks for watching.